Hello, everyone. This is Lauren Israelson, president of the United Natural Products Alliance, here with you once again to interview one of our terrific members. And today I'm honored to have as our guest, Mike Hoffman, president of Facilities Consulting. Mike is part of our science and technology group, and specifically, he is a engineer, and he works on the design, construction, engineering of FDA-regulated facilities. Been doing this for 25 years. He's pretty much seen everything. And uh, one thing I know from my experience in the industry is as companies grow and they need to expand facilities or build new facilities, uh, you can make some uh, some pretty bad mistakes early on by failing to engage uh, the proper expertise as you're thinking through what to do. And usually the rationale is, oh, we can save some money on the design and engineering. And that's um, that almost is never the case. Mike, uh, it's a pleasure to have you on with us and looking forward to having you uh, share your background and experience uh, Thanks, in dealing Mark. with companies in the dietary supplement, food, pharmaceutical arenas. Uh, and Mike lives up in beautiful Sandpoint, Idaho, as uh, the background might suggest. And uh, we're delighted to have you here with us. Thanks, Lauren. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, as uh, you were mentioning, Facilities Consulting NW specializes in helping organizations regulated under the CGMP requirements of FDA, TGA, NSF, and others to achieve compliance through facility design and construction, as well as facility operations, calibration, validation, and quality system programs. Our client-focused facility solutions are compliant, reliable, and profitable. Uh, I do want to clarify one thing. I am not an engineer. I actually, believe it or not, have a uh, degree in biology. Um, that's my background, biology, microbiology, and I... Uh, Forrest Gump my way into facility operations about 25 years ago at a biotech company. And after 10 days on the first job, being handed a two and a half million dollar construction project uh, off to the races and never looked back. And so uh, most of my career has been focused in FDA regulated industries, biotech, pharma, dietary supplement. And, and at this point, really uh, primarily specialized in dietary supplement, trying to bring uh, regulatory compliance to this part of the industry. Well, first apologies, Mike, but you had me fooled. I was sure you were an engineer. <laughs> well, that's okay. My lawyer tells me I have to have to put that disclaimer out there. So, yeah, that's um, yeah, I, 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 yeah, not a licensed engineer, but um, th that said, um, I do have a lot of experience, obviously, in facilities operations, construction, and and can bring solutions. And 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 I think actually um, coming from a biology background actually gives me a little bit of a different perspective because. I understand what's happening on the science side, on the process side, and, and some of those things that outside architects and engineers don't understand. And that's actually something we'll talk about a little bit here uh, in a few minutes. But uh, just to quickly go through a few of the um, services that, that we offer, um, typically start out with doing a CGMP gap audit or a technical review of someone's facility design and or operational processes. Uh, equipment layouts, manufacturing processes, et cetera, for compliance and efficiency. And we do this for both proposed facilities as well as existing facilities. Um, assist, we assist clients with site selection and suitability assessments, space planning, master plans, and, and conceptual layouts. Um, some of our client-focused services also include technical representation during construction, commissioning, and startup, if that's a desired thing. I know some of the bigger companies in, in the industry have their own resources in-house, but uh, particularly for the smaller groups, that's certainly not a, uh, a core business initiative that they have internally and, and a lot of times want assistance. Um, also assist clients with FDA and NSF pre-certification and audit preparation. Um, I know, you know there's a lot of focus on the documentation regulatory compliance part of things, but uh, a big part and an increasing part is is your facility design and uh, particularly cross contamination control, sanitation, and some other things. Uh, again, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute if we get a chance. But um, some of the other facility and GMP solutions we offer uh, are facility holistic facility as well as process equipment specific qualification protocol development and execution, SOP development, staff training, contractor and vendor training as well. And then in addition, uh, on top of that, the closest thing I am to an engineer is that I am a nationally registered certified energy manager. And so I am able to provide um, energy management 
existing building tune-ups and some sustainability program consulting services. Terrific. Mike, I'm always interested in, uh, in speaking with technical experts in the industry is most common mistakes that you see in your 25 years of experience. What is it people consistently get wrong that you need to go in and, and sort out and then get them back on, on the right track? Well, so, you know, really, I mean, actually, so I'm going to reference a recent UMPA webinar. You guys did the uh, outstanding webinar on the four horsemen of GMP. Yeah. Uh, the identity, purity, strength, composition. And I know, you know, without question, those are the most critical aspects of the GMPs. And historically, the regulatory agencies, especially FDA, have focused on those. Um, when helping clients with facility projects, I frequently hear this comment of, well, we've been through multiple GMP audits and we haven't had any facility issues before. Well, just because something hasn't been an enforcement focus in the past doesn't mean that it's going to get a pass in the future. And you know, recently I, I had a, co a conversation with a colleague who is a former FDA auditor that just recently left FDA to go into private industry. And she had stated that the FDA is starting to increase their emphasis on other aspects of the GMPs besides identity, purity, strength, and composition, especially contamination control. Mm -hmm. And I know, you know, there's some in the dietary supplement industry, especially mm -hmm. that may not be happy to hear about increased enforcement, but 21 CFR part 11 is very clear about the expectations for design, construction, and sanitation requirements of your physical plant and grounds. Mm -hmm. You know, subpart C specifically addresses states, I'll quote it, uh, your physical plant must be suitable in size, construction, and design to facilitate maintenance, cleaning, and sanitation operations. Um, and so to answer your question, you know, bottom line is that facility design and engineering control decisions impact compliance in several other aspects of the GMPs, particularly contamination prevention and component mix-up. And I see a lot of facilities that make mistakes there, not that they're incorrectly focusing on those other, those four G, you know, the four horsemen of the GMPs, but they don't think that these other aspects are important. And so when I come in and I do a facility design assessment or we start going through a project, there are a lot of aspects where uh, particularly identity and purity are affected by your facility design. You know, I've, I've seen multiple facilities where the HVAC system as designed and installed creates cross-contamination through shared use of air between product manufacturing spaces or lack of pressure control between buildings and or between production rooms and hallways and, and other stuff. And so you see evident signs of cross-contamination. And you know, I've been in, in facilities where meeting with the you know, director of VP of quality and asked the question, you know, have, are you rejecting product for purity issues, particularly for allergen cross-contamination? And you're, almost inevitably the answer comes back yes well we can help fix that you know if we start looking at some of these other things there are things that we can do in a facility upgrade project to address those issues that is very interesting uh, i've been in my share of facilities over the years and uh, i can say that there is a a tremendous spectrum in terms of the uh, uh, the training and capabilities of staff, but especially the facilities themselves. And you see such differences in design and layout and a lot of, of add-ons here and add-ons there. And uh, it seems to me, based on what uh, you see in the 483s and the warning letters that come out, that when companies keep trying to patch things up and expand it and, and push back that big decision of we probably really need a new facility. Now we're talking big budgets mm -hmm. that inevitably they, they will do that um, simply because they can't operate the way they are. And as they're trying to attract a higher, uh, I would say a larger, more demanding uh, client base, those clients will be expecting that higher level of GMP and especially facility. Cause that is the first thing you see the procedures mm -hmm. you got to dig in and make sure those are right. But boy, oh boy, you can't hide that building and what's in it. No, you, you you can't. And, um, you know, like I said, I mean, in, in the past, and, and, and again, even in the dietary supplement industry, a lot of companies have been around prior to the CGMPs going into place. And so, you know, as you've, you know, especially if you've been in operation that long, 
you know, stuff that that worked 20 years ago doesn't work today. And so, you know, there there are things that we can do with an existing facility to get them a lot more compliant, as well as, you know, of course, ideally, you know, build the new facility, that's a big dream, but I know not everybody has that, that budget. And so there are things that we can do as existing facilities to solve a lot of those problems. Mike, do you ever take people through just a checklist? Um, and that could be a desk audit, essentially, mm -hmm. uh, to get a sense of uh, where where their needs are. Um, I'm thinking that would be a great thing that we could offer to our, our members in the industry is uh, they can come on to a virtual event like this and basically walk them through, um, get the relevant staff involved and to say, uh, and I think this point is critical, that older facilities that predate the final GMP regulations, uh, undoubtedly there are issues there to be addressed. Um, is that something we might be able to work on together is to have you take people through and just say, here's here are the things that FDA seems to really be focusing on and here are the things that industry typically trips on. Yeah, certainly. And, and you know, like I said, I mean, my, my process really with a new client, whether it's an existing facility or somebody that's looking at building a new facility, is to really basically do a gap audit. Um, you know, FDA's got checklists, NSF has checklists, DGA has checklists, and, you know, really just more from a physical plant and grounds perspective, looking, focusing on what are those things that you have that work great? What things do you have as an opportunity to improve? And, you know, like I said, that, you know, there, there's different approaches, but the, the biggest thing is looking for stuff that can cause a cross contamination problem particularly with allergens mm -hmm. um, that 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 is an increasing focus and it you know I, i'm not seeing a lot of 483s yet really it's getting caught more on the the product testing side of things and your obligation is to you know pull those products as a you know rejected product and you've got you know your um your kappa programs and, and return policies and different things to manage it on the back end but realistically it's it's a lot more cost effective to prevent the problem on the front side and so, you know, we start out with basically it, it, it is a check sheet and, you know, I've got a process that I just go through and, you know, we look at each one of these design aspects. And I mean, they're, they're very clearly spelled out in the guidance from the agencies of, you know, what's expected for design. I know a lot of things are, particularly with FDA, there's a lot of suitable, adequate, mm -hmm. sufficient, which are gray areas. And you know, an auditor who has a very strong background in regulatory affairs versus an auditor that comes out of the lab versus an auditor with an engineering background. And, and we've all seen this, right? You know, you get one auditor that, that particularly somebody from a lab background, they're going to come in and they beat up your QC test methodology and they want to get into the weeds of how you do HPLC and what's, exactly. your, your, what's your mass spec doing. And, you know, that's their background. Um, there are other auditors who really come from a regulatory side that are going to focus on that. And they, they know these other pieces, but they're not the focus. But, you know, having heard from others in the industry that the FDA is actually looking to add more engineering and more operational experience to their auditor pool, um, I think as we move forward, those are going to become more, more important things. And, you know, like for somebody like me, I can do a full, full gap audit, you know, we can do the full checklist on everything. We can go, you know, I can go through test methods and batch records and, and quality records and quality systems and that sort of thing. But, you know, first thing I do when I show up to your facility, if your front door is unlocked and I walk into the lobby and they start looking around for people, which has happened more than once. Um, I mean, from an FDA perspective, that's a 483. That's an immediate 483. Yeah. Um, you know, similarly, you know, knowing that when I walk into the building and I see, dust on ceiling tiles or around vents that looks like it might be product because it doesn't look like dust it's got a little tinge of orange or a little tinge of yellow hmm there's a problem with your hvac system and mm -hmm. i don't even have to get past your lobby to know that yeah and so they're again just different people with different backgrounds and different exposures but um i i, I do think that it's uh it, it's an important thing that people look at well, as you say, and and we last year we had a surprising number of calls come in with that very issue that certain investigators really zeroed in on the laboratory, and that was going on a lot last year. 
And uh, and I, I share the view that the agency is now going to be looking more at engineering, design, where the flaws are. That really becomes a root cause issue. If you get that right, a whole lot of other problems can go away uh, that are very yeah. difficult to fix otherwise. And so I think that's really the message is for companies that are thinking about uh, how they can improve their, their physical facilities uh, is to get some advice early on um, and begin to so make some budget decisions, uh, where to put your money, and also uh, how to solve the most obvious problems. Uh, well, we're delighted to have you as a member and bring the expertise that you do. And it's really clear that that you really know and feel the you know how things operate in the real world. Um, yeah, where you know a company meets FDA and uh, you, the the facility is the battleground of deciding if um, if you've gone over the line and you end up with a 483 and then you have a warning letter and that's never a good day. And, you know, customers and clients uh, read that and wonder what's happening and uh, people are scrambling and uh, it's, it's always better just to feel great about your facility and take people through, be proud of what you've got. And uh, there's no question a first class facility is your, is your best salesperson. Um, in oh, yeah. my experience. Well, it is with your customers as well as with the regulatory agencies. I mean, you know, when somebody walks into a, a very clean, well-kept facility, your first inclination is to not start digging. Yeah. Right. Because, you know, okay, these people have at least given an outward appearance of they've got their act together. The facility's clean, things, you know, not seeing issues. And so you can, not that I want to suggest that an auditor is going to not dig for something, but, you know, when you've got three, two or three days, right? To, to get through this really long list of stuff. And so if the outward appearance of the facility seems to be in pretty good shape and they seem to have good control of that, okay, well, maybe I'm not going to focus as much time there as I am on some other things. And, and as we go through the processes, um, maybe, maybe we look different, differently at different, different things. Exactly. So, Exactly. But, you know, like even, you know, on the facility design side, I mean, you know, some of the fact I'm working on a project with, with the client right now and, you know, having the conversation with the regulatory affairs folks, you know, the engineering and operations team have done a pretty good job putting together a plan, but starting to ask questions now about, okay, well, what's your gowning procedure? What are your, how are you going to clean a room? What is your cleaning procedure? What QC testing are you going to do for microbial contaminants or residual allergens in a room or on equipment? And then how do those decisions from your HVAC design, from your differential pressures, from your temperature, humidity control, from your process flows, how you've separated spaces from one to another, what happens when you take dirty equipment out of a room to go to sanitation, what cross-contamination risks have you created? And so how you set these other programs up are largely driven by those engineering decisions that you make early on in a project. And a lot of times people don't think about those things. Yeah. You know, same thing for, for packaging, for labeling, for warehouse operations. You know, do you, do you have the right space provided to segregate stuff that's in QC hold? Do you have space to segregate your, your returns? Do you have stuff that you've got that adequate, right? It's not defined, but, everybody kind of has an idea of, well, if I look in and I see you've got, you know, your allergens are stacked on top of your allergen raw materials are stacked on top of your QC hold for your final release. That's probably going to raise a question with an auditor. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, Mike, it's been a real pleasure having you on today. Uh, we'll include your contact information uh, with this video and uh, we'll be checking back with you and, uh, hearing uh, more news and updates in the course of the year. If you see FDA really beginning to add more attention to the engineering and facility issues, uh, we'd very much like to have you explore that with us. Uh, we know industry is always trying to anticipate, you know, what is the emphasis this year or this month? And uh, to, be able, to be able to give people a heads up uh, to prepare for that would be a real service indeed. So, Thanks. Well, uh, hopefully beautiful spring weather coming to uh, Sandpoint and yeah. um, maybe we'll get up there and do a little fishing this summer. That'd be great. Love to have you. Thank you, Mike. A real pleasure. And uh, we'll be talking to you again soon. All right. Thanks, Lauren. Thank you very much. Bye for now. Bye.